Hi everybody, I'm back from Philadelphia, back in Erie, and I just wanted to follow up on the last visualization that I did to you know, explain the concept of a test set. So there's a lot going on in this one too, so I'll take it bit by bit. So when you come in, you'll see the, the, the red line here, which is the function that we're trying to estimate. So in the real world, we, we wouldn't know what this function looks like. And, uh, and of course, you, down here, you can get a new example. You know, if, you know, you can work with whatever example you want. So let's work with this one. So we also see a sample that's been generated from this line. And as you can see, the sample, it follows the line, but it also deviates from the line. So I like to think of, of the line or the function, you know, this, this red line might not be a line, right? It be, could be some other function that you're trying to estimate, but it's like the backbone. And then the points come from that backbone, but they deviate a bit from it. And if I were to generate another sample of, I think I have 16 points here the the general pattern would be the same because the points have the same backbone but since each point deviates a little differently a second sample would look a little bit different so down here i'll explain what these really are in a, in a second but you can change between what's called the training set and the test set and they're both samples that are generated from the line here and you can see they, they have the same backbone but they're going to look a little bit different because they they uh, because of these deviations so that's all, also called the noise and so the point here is that when you're trying to find an estimate of this function you're, you're trying to estimate the backbone because you want it to be a good fit for any sample of points, right? That could come from the true function. So you're faced with this sample here, come up with an estimate for it, but you would want that estimate to work pretty, pretty good for another sample of points as well. But you're going to have problems if when you estimate you start to follow the noise because then your estimate is pretty much going to belong just to that first sample of points and work well only for that and then any future data set that you bring in it won't work well for that because you are following the noise in that first data set which is particular to that so I'm just trying to show that in this visual, uh, visualization. So now what we can do is we can, we can toggle this here and we can take the true function out of the picture. So in reality, this is what you're faced with. You've got a sample of points and you want to find, let's say you're going to start with the best fitting line to those points. And what we saw last time was that, okay, well, once we have that, we could try to mold our estimated function even closer to these points. So here's, here's a measure of how well our estimate is fitting these points. If we tried to mold it a little closer, that goes down, which seems good, right? We're fitting those points a little bit better. And here's a little bit more. And finally, this is the extreme case, just going through every point, we get the RMSE down to zero, a perfect fit. Okay, and so I want to describe, I, I want to explain why this is not a good idea to do this. So when you're working a regression problem, the, the, the set that you're using to try to come up with your estimate, your blue estimate here, that's called the training set. But you always want to see, once you have it, you want to see how well does it do on a second data set. 
because if it doesn't do well, then that could mean that you're you're following the noise too much and and you're not capturing the backbone, right? The the true pattern. So, what we can do here is here's the best fitting line to this cloud of points. And I if I click the test set, we can see how it looks with those points as well. And it looks pretty good, okay? And up here we can always co can compare the distance of each set of points, the original training set, and the second test set. So kind of similar, okay? But now if we try to mold our estimate more to the training set here, you can see that we do better on the training set, but worse on the test set. And you can look to see how that, you see we're following the noise in the training set, but of course not in the test set, and so we're going to do worse. And so this just becomes more apparent as we do more and more of this. We do better here and worse here. And here's the extreme example. Here, perfect fit. Here, terrible fit, right? And that's because we're not trying to find the backbone, the pattern. We, we're following the noise in the training set. And that means that the estimate that you have is not going to work well for future data. And so therefore it would be worthless because that's what you want it for. You want to be able to use it to make predictions. So the point is you have to really try to avoid overfitting and it's not easy. Um, you always want to make sure that you use a test set to see how your estimate is going to work on future data sets. But it's also important to have um, decent knowledge about the, you know, the area that you're working in. So anyway, uh, that's uh, my, my uh, explanation of test sets. And I think I'm going to do one more video. Uh, I'll, I'll do a real world example where I can show you how we can take, take some real data, uh, find an estimate, and then use a test set to see um, how well we're doing. Okay? All right.